All right, today we're going to talk about how naming, like naming angles and segments and lines, as well as addition postulates for segments and angles. So our objectives are that we will be able to recall essential geometry, geometric terms, classify and name basic geometric figures, and we will be able to use the segment addition postulate and angle addition postulate to solve problems. So some vocabulary, a point, a point has no dimension. It's represented by a dot and names a location space. So let's say we have this, it would, that would be point P if we label it with a P. A line is one dimension. It's an infinite set of points. We have two arrowheads, one on each end, and it extends forever. Let's say if we label this with a K and a P, this would be written as line KP, or it could also be line P, K. A line segment is a part of a line. It has two endpoints and it includes all the ends in between. So if we had this being KP, it could be line segment KP or line segment P, K. So when we're naming a line, we put the arrows on the ends for the hat above the letters and for line segments, it's just a straight line, no arrows. Array consists of one endpoint and extends um, in one direction without end. So we could do like that. This is K and this is P. This would be Ray K P. It could not be Ray P K because the letter that we start with is always going to be the endpoint. If we wanted to do Ray P K, P would have to be the endpoint, and then it extends forever in the direction of K. So, what type of figure do we have in number one? That's right, it's a ray. And when naming a ray, we're going to use the ray hat. The endpoint letter comes first, and then our second letter on our ray. Here, because it has no arrows, we know it's a line segment. We could either name it line segment CH or it could be line segment HC. An angle consists of two different rays. So here's the one ray. Here's our other ray. And they connect at the same endpoint, which is referred to as our vertex. So there's lots of different ways we can name angles. Typically, we want to use the three letter names. So we start on one of the rays, go to the vertex, and then go to the other ray. So it could be angle A, B, C. It also could be uh, angle C, B, A if we start on the other ray. Since there's no other angles in this picture, we could also just name it by its vertex and say it's angle B. Or let's say there was a number in here, like the number 2, labeling it as angle 2. That's not saying it's 2 degrees, because it doesn't have the degree symbol, and that's how we know it's a name for the angle, not its measure. Next, let's talk about some uh, classifications of angles, how we classify them by their size. The first one is a right angle. It means it measures 90 degrees. So something I like to use to help with measuring angles is a ruler. I know that the corner of a ruler is always going to be 90 degrees. And we represent that with the little square. Now, an acute angle measures less than, measures between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So anything like this. So if I were to check it, make sure it's flat. 
I would see that that angle is smaller than the corner. An obtuse angle measures between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Something like that. If I put my ruler in the corner, I could see that this extended farther than my corner, so I know it's more than 90. And then a straight angle basically just looks like a line. It's open all the way, and it measures 180 degrees. And I can see that it lines up. If I was a better artist, no, there we go. It lines up with the side of the ruler, so we know it's 180 degrees. All right, so let's classify these by their, classify the angle shown below, and then name it. So if I use my ruler to check, I'm going to line my ruler up with one side. That's bigger than my corner, so I know that it is an obtuse angle, and sometimes we get lazy and don't want to write angle, so we just draw the angle symbol. We could name this angle TUV, or we could name it angle VUT, or we could name it angle U. Number four is a straight angle. The reason we call it a straight angle and not a line is because it said classify the angle. Um, so this would be angle D, E, G, or angle G, E, D, or just angle E. All right, so let's move on to the addition postulates. So I made a typo when I printed your papers, and we're going to ignore this, and we're going to say that VW equals 44. And we're not going to have to find VW down here. All right, so it tells us that MV is 4X minus 1. MW is 3X plus 3. And we just said VW, the whole thing, is 44. So what the segment addition postulate says is if I add this piece to this piece, it should equal the whole piece. So 4x minus 1 plus 3x plus 3 equals 44. Now we just do some algebra. We're going to combine like terms. Subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 7, and I get that x equals 6. But it wants me to find the length of the m and the length of m, w. So I need to take the 6 and plug it back in for x. Four times six is twenty-four, minus one is twenty-three. Three times six is eighteen, plus three is twenty-one. And to double check, twenty-three plus twenty-one gives us our forty-four total that we had at the beginning. And finally, the angle addition postulate. If A, B, C, so it's saying the whole angle all of it together is 50 degrees, find the measure of D, B, C. Well, if we know the whole thing is 50, we're going to add the two smaller pieces together. Combine like terms, we get 5x plus 5 equals 50. Subtract 5 on both sides, and 5x equals 45. Divide by 5, we get that x equals 9. So to find the measure of angle D, B, C, we plug 9 into 2x. 
2 times 9 would be 18 degrees. Go ahead and fill in your summary and I'll see you in class.